Hello, and welcome to part two of looking at these uh, push-pull tube amplifiers. So I've inserted some tubes in the amplifier here, and I've just before powered up, so I made two more minor modifications. One is a bleeding resistor here uh, across the large capacitors here, filtering capacitors, just so they will discharge a little bit faster. And the other modification is a thermistor on the input here. So it will just prevent a huge current surge going into the amplifier. So it's going to be a little bit nicer on everything and generally it will prolong the life of your tubes as well. So the EF34 tubes I found, uh, a pair of these, I hope you can see this, don't know what the focus is like, uh, but they are Svetlana EL34 tubes. So already put a pair in here, plus the preamp tube and the uh, phase inverter. So we should be ready to power up and see what happens. Okay, so I've added my light bulb current tester here. So this is just a watt meter. I've got a box here with some fuses and then we have four light bulbs. And I can uh, switch in individual light bulbs to change the current limiting. So just put that here and have a multimeter connected uh, just across the main filtering capacitor so we can see how much voltage is on there. So we're ready to power on. Okay, no blown fuses. We have about 435 volts on our B plus. Okay, there goes the tube, so consumption goes up a bit here, 370, 345, and 63 volts, but um, see, well, you probably can't see that, but the light bulbs are lighting up slightly here, so we have some, some voltage drop. But anyway, it's just a quick test to make sure that uh, we don't have any short circuit or anything crazy current consumption. So I'll just remove the light bulb current limiter and then we can uh, continue our testing. Okay, so I removed the current limiter and still have the meter hooked up here. Let's see, we still got about 8 volts on these capacitors. It will take a long time to discharge even with the bleeding resistor, but uh, 8 volts, no problem. Very safe. And I've hooked up a test load and analog discovery over here. And I just quickly drawn up a small schematic of how I believe the output state is wired. So here we have our two EL34 tubes. So out here we'll have our phase inverter, driver phase inverter, and then we'll have a gain uh, tube over here. So the switching between EL34 and KT88 is switching a pair of resistors here. So these, this is one switch. They're connected, physically connected together, one switch. So it will switch between these two sets of resistors. There's probably a capacitor in parallel here. And switching between triode mode and pentode, or I guess also linear mode, uh, is just switching here. So we're switching between um, separate taps on the primary side of the output transformer or connecting it together with the uh, plate. 
So the way the switch is drawn here, that would be in triode mode. And flip it over here, we go into pentode mode. And here we have our main B plus going into the output transformer. And secondary winding here. So we have winding for or tap for 4 ohm, 8 ohm. And well, there will be a wire going off here for feedback all the way back to the gain stage. Okay, so let's try to do some measurements and see how it looks. The first measurement we have here is the frequency response and we're going from 1 Hertz up to 250 kilohertz. And first we can see uh, reference 0 dB at 1 kilohertz and the amplifier gain is 28.46 dB. Uh, the base extension is pretty amazing for a tube amplifier. Uh, minus 3 dB at 3.5 Hz and we have some kind of bump here. Not sure what that is, but one thing we can be sure of is that below 20 Hz probably uh, the distortion is probably very very high um, because of the output transformers. Anyway, um, not so important. Uh, actually, I've, I like it better if it rolls off at 20 Hz, for example, here. But uh, not a big deal. Uh, we can have a look at the distortion in the base area uh, later. And the high end, 20 kilohertz, we are only down uh, 0.36 dB. Um, that's pretty excellent. Minus 3 dB point is all the way above 100 kilohertz. So it indicates the output transformers are pretty decent quality. Here we have harmonic distortion and noise versus output power. This is on the 8 ohm tap into 8 ohm load. So the from 10 milliwatt here all the way up to about 2 watt. This this is just dominated by noise, but it's it's pretty low. Um, see 2 watt we are on 0.036 percent uh, THD plus noise. Power-wise, 10 watt, only 0.25%, and then it starts rising, hit 1% 1, 1 around 15, 16 watt, and actual clipping happen at around 25 watt output at 3.3% uh, distortion. So and the red trace we see here tells us how much input voltage, how much uh, signal voltage we need for a given amount of watts. So we can see to get 20 watt out of the amplifier, we need an input level of 0 0.5 volt. Here we have harmonic distortion and noise versus frequency. We're going from 10 hertz to 50 kilohertz. So and this is 1 watt into 8 ohm using the 8 ohm tap. So it's quite quite impressive performance. See here at 1 kilohertz we are only at 0.03% uh, distortion noise. And if we look down here at the spectrum we can see it's there pretty much no harmonics visible, it's all just noise um, at a pretty low respectable uh, level and well down here at 10 Hertz we can see some so we have fundamental tone here 
second harmonic, third, fourth, fifth harmonic here. Uh, but 10 hertz, well, doesn't really matter. Uh, we can't hear anything. Still, it looks, looking at the sine wave here and blue trace here is our signal with the fundamental notched out. So it's only distortion and noise we see on the blue waveform here. And it's on a different scale, so 32 millivolt uh, here at this level, minus 32 millivolt down here. Um, that looks pretty good. So it rises a bit to 20 kilohertz, 0.065%, but still, still quite impressive. All the way out, 40 kilohertz, 0.1%. So yeah, that looks good. So let's try 15 watt and see what that looks like. So at higher output power, uh, we can see, well, the distortion is still reasonably low. So we are, it's not quite 15 watt, it's about 13, 13 and a half, 14 watt output here. Um, but very even distortion. But if we look down here at the uh, harmonics, we can see second harmonic here is fairly low but the third harmonic is the dominant harmonic and we can see the same over here on the blue trace so we will have three three waves for each of the uh, signal waves so that is the dominant third harmonic we're looking at here and generally people tend to like when listening they like uh, even harmonics better than odd harmonics so it will be interesting uh we'll listen to it see if uh how it sounds um so these two distortion tests i've done here are both in the pentode mode or ultra linear mode uh, i'll try to do a few tests in the triode mode as well uh, but I expect it will look fairly similar, uh, only it will probably have a little bit less output power. Here we have the intermodulation distortion performance. So we're sending in two tones, 19 kilohertz and 20 kilohertz. These are the two fundamental tones we see here. So this plot looks impressively clean. So we pretty much only get these two peaking up here, minus 68 dB and minus 68.5 dB at 21 kilohertz. And then we get one at one kilohertz, minus 62 dB. But that's very impressive performance. Usually you'll get a lot of side bands going down here, some amplifiers uh, very heavily, but this is very clean. Here we have the output impedance, so from 10 hertz to 50 kilohertz, so it's quite impressive. So this is on the 8 ohm tap, so the 4 ohm tap will have about half this uh, of output impedance. But on the 8 ohm tap, we are below 2 ohm all the way from 20 hertz all the way up to 50 kilohertz. It even goes a little bit lower up there. Uh, can switch to linear here. So yeah, we can see below 1.8 ohm at 20 kilohertz, all the way up. Um, that's quite good for a tube amplifier. Um, of course, solid state Amplifiers will have much lower output impedance down in the hundreds of milliohm or even down in the tens of milliohm output impedance. But for a tube amplifier, this is quite good. Here we have input impedance and it's quite nice. Um, above 65k most of the range, at least until about three kilohertz and then it falls down to about what do we have here about 30 kilo ohm uh, input impedance at 20 kilohertz 
so that's quite good no problems here and finally let's have a look at the power supply hum the scale of the spectrum we're looking at here so it's a spectrum from 0 hertz to uh, 1 kilohertz and 0 dB is referenced at 1 volt so the 50 hertz is down minus 58 dB 100 hertz 59.7 dB 150 hertz 73 dB 200 hertz 72 dB so that's quite acceptable uh, remember reference is 1 volt 0 dB so that looks very nice nothing else to really see here so overall I would say performance of this amplifier is quite good better than I expected uh, but that's always good so this is just one of them so I do want to test the other one as well just to make sure we have equal performance and we can try have a look at the difference in measurement between running the triode mode and the pentode mode so all these measurements have been done in pentode mode I have done a few more measurements just to check the difference between the um, 4 ohm tap and the 8 ohm tap most of the measurements I've shown here have all been on the 8 ohm tap but there's really not much difference as long as we run a form load on the form tap so that's quite good <laughs>